I get to hold this in my hand. I'll speak loudly so you can hear me in the back. Is it okay? It sounded a little quiet with the last speech. I, I'm not known for having a quiet voice, though, so we don't have to worry too much about that. So I'm R.J. Michael, and I was uh, one of the uh, creators of the Amiga, and I'm, I'm going to give a bit of a shorter speech in order to allow some time for questions, and uh, uh, right at the end I'm going to drag Dave Needle up here. I noticed he didn't have a speaking slot at this gig. <laughs> he deserves uh, a moment up here talking yeah, with you guys. Time for that, that dead. Just speak up. Okay. <laughs> Can I do it without a mic? Do you guys mind? So, uh, like I said, I'm going to keep it short. I'll get Dave up here. We can ask her some questions. There's always interesting questions. And in fact, you know, it's, it's been 30 years, and a lot of us have been asked to help make speeches. There's been a lot of awesome literature that's been written over the last few years, the history of the computer industry, how the Amiga fit in with that, the history of the Amiga, the history of Commodore. There's been a lot of opportunity for people to ask the questions, and and to pump and pump at that well of the Amiga story. And then, you know, that well's running pretty dry for new material, I, I gotta say. I found one the other day that I was so proud of. I was going to show it to you t today as one of my inventions during Amiga Computer Days. I had taken a floppy disk. You guys got to go home and try this yourselves. If you take the metal from the floppy disk, the slidey bit, and uh, the disc itself has a circle in the center, and they've got all the holes and everything there just right. That you can take the big sliding bit, fold it down, turn it into Starship Enterprise wings, and the little <laughs> disc makes the nacelle, and it looks, it looks just like the Starship Enterprise. It's really cool. I was going to show you this. I went and researched it on the internet. It's all over on the internet. It was my invention, but it's all over out there. <laughs> but, there's, it's hard to find new stuff, but I did, I did find at least an, an interesting detail that hasn't, hasn't been talked about much. And, and in fact, what, you know, we, we talk a lot about the success of the Amiga, but we don't talk too much about the failures. And so I thought I would start with some of our classic failures that we committed at the Amiga. You know, because we did get a lot of stuff wrong. We got stuff wrong like... Um, uh, well, for instance, those that na those naughty bits that we put into the operating system that caused the thing to not be launched for a, a month in the UK. I don't know if you guys know about this, but some uh, there was some hidden Easter egg text that, that we put in, and I can't actually tell you what the text said up here on stage. It's that naughty. <laughs> But uh, uh, we, you know, it was, a, it was something that ended up getting leave, being left in the ROM, and it, it caused the machine to not not ship on time in the UK, and that that was quite a problem. And you know, and we also, uh, for example, uh, I, I, the, you guys have just seen this amazing hardware presentation, and 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 the Amiga hardware was perfect. The Amiga hardware was flawless. There was not a thing you could have done better in the world. The operating system was a pile of poop. It was so horrible, you can't believe it. The 1.0 release of the Amiga operating system is something to be, to hang your head in shame about as an as a engineer. A lot of it worked and a lot of it was good, but we were in such a hurry and also a little bit young, a little bit naive. A lot to grow and learn about, about our careers and our profession, and, and we made a lot of mistakes. A, a great example is that in a, uh, the, the serial device, in the original serial device, if it tried to allocate a memory buffer and it was unable to get any memory, at this point the logic was so deep down, deep buried in the operating system and, and it was impossible for us at that point to do anything about running out of memory. So we would just ignore the fact that the system told us we had no memory and we'd go ahead as if we had gotten it anyway and the system would crash. <laughs> And, and crash in a way where you could never use the system anymore unless you rebooted the system. And so in those early days, it was really, it was pathetic in a lot of ways. And we got a lot of stuff wrong. But easily, the worst thing that we did, in my opinion, the absolute stupidest thing that we did, 
You know that awesome bouncing ball demo? Man. We, we were young, and we were stupid, and we were arrogant, and, and we were happy that Commodore had bought the Amiga, but I will admit to you, probably for the first time in public, I will admit to you, that we were also a little bit, you know, pissed off about the way things were going, and, and there was some friction, and, uh, and we allowed those feelings to make us make, make a choice that, that has haunted me ever since. You, you saw the, the, the hardware presentation of the Amiga and how it had all these amazing bit planes and, and that the bit planes allowed you all this incredible freedom to do all sorts of amazing and fantastic things. And, and one of the things that we did with those bit planes was we used the, the bit planes to create the effect of a grid in the background of the bouncy ball. And you've all seen that grid. It was the thing that really made that demo so spectacular and hard to reproduce in the beginning was the fact that as the ball, ball bounced, that shadow fell on the background. It fell on the grid and it fell on the white background and changed the colors appropriately. And everyone else in the industry looked at this thing and said, my God, I've never seen anything like that. This is new, this is amazing. This is a machine that can do something that no other machine can do. And immediately, all of the competition set about reproducing the bouncing ball demo. And, and we saw it show up on, on various hardware platforms over the years. And, uh, and to my delight, about two weeks ago, I was shown a bouncing ball on a watch. Oh my God, is that awesome or what? Can you believe it? It's gotten to the point that you can do it now on a watch. But it became a standard that everyone would strive for. And, and if you could show that your machine could do a bouncing ball, then you were golden. And everything is great. And you guys got this part of the story. And this part is, is all well known. The part that's not well known is that the grid in the background originally wasn't merely a grid, but it also had the words Amiga Computer Inc. in the background. Now, you can use an algorithm to recreate a ball shadow moving over a grid and figure out which pixels to change colors based on a simple, fast performing algorithm, but it would have been impossible for you to put Apple Computer or Atari Inc. or other words back there with the hardware at the time. It was not possible to do. It was an advantage that we had that had Amiga Computer Inc. that just stunned everyone who saw it. And when Commodore bought the company, we took those words out and we did not put Commodore back there. Instead, we left it as a demo with just the plain grid and shot ourselves in the foot in a way that to this day, I regret that we did that. If we had put the word Commodore back there, no one would have been able to touch that demo for a year, maybe two years afterwards, and we would have owned that space, that performance space, but we didn't. We got it wrong. We got some stuff right, though. Just, just before I came in here, we were talking, and I was asked, you know, did, did you ever expect this? 30 years later that you could come home to a, a meeting like this with, with fans, with people that have, have used the machine, with people that have so changed their lives in many cases. And I, I've heard so many of your fascinating stories about who you are today and, and what you got interested in, into music or art or graphics or video production. And we, we were successful with that. We did a lot of that. but. He asked, you know, was I expecting this? And, and in truth, no, I, I never expected this. We never expected the Amiga to, to be as successful as it was, to become the machine that it became in so many people's lives. We, we hoped for it. But, but it was beyond our wildest dreams to think that it would have ended up being as successful as it was because I have had the delightful opportunity to talk with a lot of you about the, what has happened in your lives and how when you were young you had that same passion in me, you're looking at the computer, you can't wait to get your hands on it and play with it. And in, in some cases it turned into a video production career and, and uh, or music as I just heard. And, and in my case that love of playing with game machines in, in the beginning turned in, into this for me. And you know, uh, I, I, I gave a speech just recently in Germany. In, I mean, not in Germany, in Amsterdam, excuse me. 
and, and, it, and I remembered. Yeah, you understand, I was in Amsterdam, so things are a little hazy for me. <laughs> so, when we were just talking, he said, you know, uh, uh, you know, I said, so what do you do? He says, oh, I'm just this guy. You know, I'm just this guy. I got a daughter. She's doing really well in school. She's getting really good grades. I don't know where this came from. I have no idea how a great student that's able to get A's in school. That was not me. I was just this guy with dreams and hopes and fantasies, but I'm, I ain't no genius. Or are I? <laughs> and, and it's here. <laughs> but you know, any, anyone who knows me, anyone who's had you know an opportunity to spend a little time with me, you're you're quick to attest. I'm just this guy. I'm just you know I'm just little Bob Michael from the South Side of Chicago. And what I had was a a, a passion to see my dream through, and, and a, a burning desire that turned into the Amiga computer and, and some of the other stuff that I've done with my life. But the point that I would like to make, and especially interesting to see this wide range of people in this room, is that you, know, you can do it too. Anyone can do it. Anyone can have a dream, have a passion, have something they really believe in, and follow it, chase it, and pursue it, and you can make it happen yourself in your own life. And, and as we've seen over and over again here at the, in the Amiga computer, in the, uh, the community, how many people have done that, have taken the, the passion and taken the inspiration that they got from the, the world around them and, and, and saw it through and turned it into something important and real in your own life? I've been doing this speech stuff now for a bunch of years. And and, and in, in the beginning, I, I was shy about it, and then I kind of got comfortable with the idea of it, but I've gotten shy all over again, especially over these last couple of years. There's been a lot of attention to the Amiga, a lot of people coming out and, and reliving and, and bringing the old hardware out and bringing their, their software that they developed all these years ago. And, and, and I, I'm, again, you know, I... I, I I, I, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm not a great public figure, if you know what I mean. But I've, I've come to understand that it, it's my place. That, that, you know, we did this thing. And, and like it or not, 30 years later, we're still the guys that did that thing. And, and I know that because of the thing that we created and the effect that it had on you in your life, that, that we mean something to you. And when you get a chance to meet the people that created that thing, that changed your life. I, I know that that's true, and I, I recognize that, and it helps him feel a little more comfortable standing up here talking with him. But the real thing that you guys have to understand, to bring it back to where I started, is, is that for us, you guys are the heroes. You guys are the ones who took that thing that we created and made it into something changed your life, did something important with what you had, grew yourself, developed cool software, you developed amazing games for us to play and hardware for us to extend our lives. You are the people that are the heroes to us, the original creators of the Amiga. And so while we're here, I recommend that instead of celebrating lopsided, we all celebrate the success together and this thing that we enjoy together. And on that note, I would like to thank you and take questions. <laughs> Thank you.